In our last video, we talked about the provisions that arise in the Articles of Association, and we said that we would save lever provisions for this video. So firstly, what is a lever provision? A lever provision is when an employee who is a shareholder is required to offer up their shares for transfer should they cease to be an employee of the company. And the price that they'll get for the shares is dependent on whether they are a good lever or a bad lever. So a good lever is someone who leaves the company through no fault of their own. So due to death or ill health or redundancy, for example. But the board of directors will usually have the discretion to determine if someone's a good lever or not. And then a bad lever would be someone who resigns or who is dismissed for cause. So someone who leaves the company because they've done something wrong. Um, this could be due to gross misconduct, um, they've committed fraud, or maybe they've breached their restrictive covenants, for example. So with a good lever, the price that they'll get for their shares is fair value, so they'll benefit from the increase in value of the company's shares. But for a bad lever, the price they'll get for their shares is normally the price paid for them, so they won't get the benefit of the increase in the value of shares. So this could be as low as nominal value or for free if they're offered the shares for free. <laughs> So one of the key questions is going to be who's going to be caught by those lever provisions. Uh, founders and investors will generally want all employees to be to be caught by those lever provisions uh, because employees will often have received their shares, as you say, at maybe a, a discount or at nominal value or through a share option scheme. And they're often given those shares to incentivize them. So if they then cease to be an employee, they, you know, the investors, the founders don't want lots of ex employees on the cap table benefiting from maybe an increase in, in the value of the shares that, that's being produced by the employees who are currently working in the company. So it's often normal to have no, normal employees to be caught by these lever provisions. But the question often arises is whether founders should be caught by these lever provisions. So investors will want founders to be caught by these lever provisions because they'll want to make sure that the founders are tied into the business. And, uh, you know, if lever provisions apply to their shares, then that's going to be a disincentive to the founders leaving the business. Uh, but from a founder perspective, they may think, well, I haven't, you know, received my shares as, as an incentive like other employees. I've you know, founded this company. I've um, you know, grown the business from the very beginning. It was maybe my idea. So why should I, why should my shareholding be at risk? Should I decide to leave for whatever reason, you know, which may be a good lever scenario, you know, for example, where you're leaving, say, because of ill health. So, you know, even if in a good lever scenario where they're getting fair value for their shares, because they're the founder, they, they may be thinking, well, no, I should be treated differently to other employees. And so whether the founders are caught is often going to be a point for negotiation. So there needs to be a compromise between the founders and the investors. So this may be that the lever provisions only apply to part of the founder's shares, or it could be that there's a mechanism in place like reverse vesting. So with reverse vesting, this is where the founder would hold all their shares up front. Um, and then over the vesting period, which is usually a few years, um, if they leave within that period, then they'll have to sell a set amount of those shares. So the sooner the founder leaves, the more shares that they'll have to sell. And then after the vesting period finishes, then all the shares become fully invested in the founder, meaning that the founder would have full rights to those shares. So reverse vesting provisions act as an incentive for founders to kind of stay and commit to the company. But then that also offers reassurance to the investors and the co-founders. So while founders being caught by lever provisions can sometimes be a sort of slightly contentious conversation between founders and investors, one of the other ways that the investors can ensure that they're protected is by making sure that employee, all employees, including founders, are caught by restrictive covenants in the shareholders agreement. So I'm sure a lot of you will have come across restrictive covenants in your in your day to day life uh, in, in employment contracts, for example, and in a shareholders agreement, they're going to be very similar. So it's going to be points around, uh, you know, not competing with the company, uh, not soliciting employees, not soliciting clients away from the company. And if you're an investor, you're going to want to make sure that any employees who are shareholders are caught by these restrictive covenants by having them in the shareholders agreement. Um, but if you're an investor, the other thing to think about is just making sure that they're drafted in, in a way as to ensure they only capture 
employees who are shareholders and not all of the shareholders. And this is because, you know, you might have, say, other investments or, you know, maybe what you do in your day to day life uh, that that is in a similar space to the company you've invested in. So you don't want to inadvertently breach those restrictive covenants and, and you know, maybe your shareholding be at risk. So you want to make sure that there are restrictive covenants included, but that as an investor, you're not caught by them. So that wraps up our video on lever provisions and our series on key founder and shareholder protections. Um, keep an eye out for our next series. And in the meantime, have a look at our other videos on raising investment.